the programme this week, we welcome the All Blacks to Harold's Cross. We then head to Shelburne Park for the semi-finals of the Shelburne Tote Open 525. Then it's on to Clonmel for the final of the Enfield Munster Puppy Cup and Newbridge for the final of the J.P. Moran Newbridge Oaks. <laughs> Cross welcomed the legendary All Blacks rugby team to the stadium last Tuesday, where they enjoyed a relaxing night out before the pressure of their match against Ireland. A special race was laid on in their honour. Well, they're here now on the way for the All Blacks Grand Slam Tour 2005 525. One Timble Rebel, two Power Juicer, three Lady Rico, four Rossport Glass, five is Fast Forecast, and six Lost Control. Winning ticket, mate. <laughs> Winning ticket. And away they go, and fastest in the stride, number three, Lady Rico, took a flyer from Traps and gets around the corner from Trap number five, Fast Forecast. It's three, Lady Rico at five, Fast Forecast. Now two, Power Juicer in third spot, down the far side, three, Lady Rico. Here comes number five, Fast Forecast on the outside, but number two in the inside, Power Juicer. But five, four, Fast Forecast leads into the third bend from three, Lady Rico. Two, Force to check at that point, Power Juicer. And five, Fast Forecast, surely gone into a decisive lead. Over number three, Lady Rico, up the home straight. Number five, Fast Forecast is going to hold on. Number three, Lady Rico, finishing well again, back in third, number two, Power Juicer, the winning time, 29.80. And the result of the sixth race, the All Blacks Grand Slam Tour 2005, 5-2-5, the winner, number five, Fast Forecast, second, number three, Lady Rico, third, number two, Power Juicer, and 29.80, the winning time. Well, Byron Keller, the All Blacks, you're, uh, you had a great start to your Grand Slam Tour against the Welsh last day, and uh, you're here at Harold's Cross, I suppose, celebrating. Yeah, well, not celebrating, but we're here just to relax, to get out of the environment of uh, playing rugby. But it's awesome to be here and uh, participate in a few bets and have a bit of fun and uh, just relax and get away from the rugby scene. Yeah, I saw you down there presenting the trophy. Though. A big smile on your face. Maybe you're back the winner, perhaps. Yeah, we did actually. Uh, copped up a few dollars in the back pocket, so uh, a wee bit of a competition in amongst the boys at the moment. So winner takes all, so there's, uh, there's a lot on the line. Now it's whatever, four days to the match and whatever, I'm sure tonight there'll be no drink involved, but a good meal. Did you ask for seconds? You're all big lads. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, plenty of proportions out here. We've been looked after thoroughly and uh, really enjoying Ireland and, and great hospitality tonight here as well. And it's just tremendous to get away from it and, and uh, relax. Yeah, but you won't be too disappointed when the Irish beat you. <laughs> we'll be looking forward to the challenge on Saturday. Well, we've got two or three races left to go anyway, so uh, I'm sure there will be plenty more winners ahead of you tonight. Yeah, thanks very much. A reminder that next Friday night, Harold's Cross hosts the semi-finals of the Bagot Racing Irish Grand National and the Green Park Lodge Grand Prix gets underway, while at Galway Stadium, the Connacht All Blacks are holding a benefit night. <laughs> The Midland Derby is due to start on Thursday night at Mullingar Stadium. The new sponsors on board are Bruce Betting, and when approached about resurrecting the Midland Oaks, they said they'd prefer a derby, and hence the Midland Derby was born. Bruce Betting was approached to sponsor the Oaks originally by Mr Patrick O'Flynn, who is the general manager of Mullingar Dog Track. He approached us because he knows uh, Bruce personally, and, uh, because he has a number of dogs that he runs in Mullingar on a very regular basis. And Patrick approached us to do the Oaks originally, then he had let us know that the Derby was available. So we decided it would be a better opportunity for us if we sponsored the Derby instead, the fact that dogs would be allowed into it. Uh, since then, there's 36 dogs entered. There's over 14,000 in prize money for them. Uh, so obviously it would be a nice prize if someone has a dog good enough to win it. Uh, it's obviously good genuine racing from our point of view, and we're delighted with that. It's good quality racing. Um, we intend to sponsor a lot of other races during the four-week period that has ran over. Uh, in the run up to Christmas. It starts on the 17th of November and it runs the whole way until the final will be on the 8th of December, Friday night, which is a new thing for Mullingar Dog Track as well. I understand they're starting to open on Friday nights now in the run up to Christmas. We also have three betting shops in Mullingar ourselves, so everyone in that area would know of us and it's just a way of giving something back to them as well. Some of the crew from Bruce Betting have also formed a syndicate and hope to have many a good night out on the other side of the track. A couple of us in head office got uh, involved just after Christmas. We decided uh, we'd form a syndicate and we purchased a race dog. And unfortunately the dog got injured on us and, and we hadn't much luck. But we all came, came together a couple of weeks ago and we decided we'd go again. So we purchased an unraced pup from good friends of mine, Kevin Grennan and Vivian Grennan. And basically we all came together and we chipped in a few quid 
and hopefully this dog will be out after Christmas and hopefully we'll have a bit more luck than, than we had with the last one. Bruce himself has a good few dogs with uh, Carmel Finnegan who's a local trainer based near the Mullingar track and uh, we decided that we put the dog into training with Carmel. She's going very well at the minute. She had, uh, I think it was four winners there two Saturday nights ago in Mullingar. So we're all very hopeful that she can get the best out of her pup and hopefully after Christmas we'll, we'll have a winner or two. When we formed the syndicate, obviously, you know, it's, it's racing the dog and whatever, but the other side of it would be the, you know, the social end of things. We decided, like, you know, with the tracks all being done up in the last 10 years by Gordon McGon, that, you know, not only our members, but, you know, any of the staff of Bruce Bett and the girls, and, you know, we've a good few shops around the country that if any of them wants to come racing, you know, it's not like it was a few years ago. You walk into any of the tracks now, and it's basically like walking into a hotel, you sit down, you have a few drinks, you have a four course meal, enjoy the night's racing and hopefully the staff can come and see our dog winning. And we're sure they'll all be out in force to witness the first round of the Midland Derby in Mullingar on Thursday night. <laughs> It was a very festive night at Shelburne last Saturday with all the Christmas decorations and everyone getting into the festive spirit, which was helped along by a great night's racing. Alva Taggart and friends were enjoying their night at the dogs as they celebrated Elva's 21st birthday, and we're sure they got a few good tips for the semi-finals of the Tote Open 525. The first semi-final, Tote Open 525, and one get cover Kong, two Roman legends, three kill up Billy, four prices male, five big by Bob and six different state. Pair behind traps, away to go to number two steps out lively, Roman legend with number three Killock Billy up to the bend on the inside two Roman legend three Killock Billy and the legend leaves, leads on the bend a big outsider here come clear into the far side that's number two Roman legend out four clear from one get cover common second and five big boy Bob is third but down towards the third bend and Roman legend is out clear four or five ahead at the stage from number one get cover come and moving on he's six clear turning for home number two Roman legend stretches up the straight to win this one a big upset here in this opening semi-final second is number one get cover common third number six different state the time 28 76 the result of the first semi-final the winner number two Roman legend owned by Joe Cunningham trained by Seamus Graham second number one get cover calm third number six different state the time 28 76 <laughs> Second semi-final of the Tote Open 525. One Super Hot Honey, two Good Value, three Kulavani Beck, four Galadair Romeo, and five Yeah Man, and six Gavin Trafford. The favourite in five, and away to go. It's final level start. Number one though, Super Hot Honey showing his brilliant early pace as usual. Leading up from six Gavin's Rocket in second. Yeah Man now moves into third with number four Galadair Romeo. But down the far side, one Super Hot Honey, and on the outside, six Gavin's Rocket. Here comes five. That's Yeah Man, and in behind is number four Galadair Romeo. The third bend, and number five Yeah Man comes up to head six. Gavin's rocket four is running on Galder Romeo but it's Yeman hits the front and goes on stretching out up the straight number five Yeman wins it second is number four that's Galder Romeo it's a fourth of a third the time a very fast 28-61 the result of the second semi-final, the winner, number five, Yeman, owned by Colin McCarthy and trained by Owen McKenna. Second, number four, Galder Romeo. Third, number six, Gavin's Rocket. The time, 28-61. The final of the Tote Open 5-5 will be run on Thursday night at Shelburne and the trap draw in one get cover calm. Two, Roman Legend. Three is Galder Romeo. Four, Yeman. Five, Gavin's Rocket. And in six, different state. The favourite has to be Yeman, running very, very well at the moment and nicely drawn in four. But it's Yeman, hits the front and goes on, stretching out up the straight. Number five, Yeman wins it. move on to Sunday night's action when the final of the J.P. Moore and Newbridge Oaks 525 took place in the County Kildare Stadium, offering a winner's prize of €7,500 and a bonus of €50,000 to the winner if she goes on to win the 2006 Irish Oaks. Well, J.P., this is your third year sponsoring Newbridge Oaks, and this year, well, a wide-open renewal. Yeah, it's a good race. Um, Drupy Stacey is probably... Um, Probably favourite to win the Oaks next year. A lot of people's opinions, the Irish Oaks, that is. Golf crazy, crack dog. Garwick Tarras, brilliant early. 
Uh, okay, you're always a good dog, a lot of people fancy it. Uh, four dog Mama Tina is running for charity, Christina Noble, so hopefully it wins. It'd be nice to see nice to see that win. And uh, Tyra Lee's a brilliant dog, PJ Fai's dog, so brilliant race, yeah, can't complain. Six dog Ruby Stace is in trap six, it's a hard draw. If she goes up in front, she'll probably win. Again, girl with guitar should probably get the bend. I don't know, it's just a question of can they pull her back. I don't know, I don't really know. I, I can't see Tyra Lisa winning myself, but it can win. And, be great to see Mamatina win it, whatever way it wins. I know you've been offering prices all week. Do you have any liabilities on the race? No. Not as yet. Not one. Not one. <laughs> it's early yet. This is new bridge. They don't bet till about four seconds before the off, so we'll kick on then. Of course, the €50,000 bonus if they go on to win the Oaks next year. Jesus, Jesus. We'll worry about that next year. It's coming up to Christmas, so we'll, we'll worry about that in the new year. we sell a few acres or something. So just hope for one of the outsiders. Yeah, equity row is lovely now. It's lovely. JP, best of luck. Yeah, thanks, man. And the runners now on parade for the 2005 JP Moore and Newbridge Oaks in Trap 1 Golf Crazy. The Munster Oaks winner, a daughter of Droopy's Cool and Golfing Choice, trained by Dennis Shanahan from Michael Moriarty and Kerry, a 5 to 1 chance with an ideal draw. To the favourite, Girl with Guitar, trained by Francie Murray for Kieran Lonergan and Castle Blaney, a daughter of Moyne Rebel and Chill Out Olive. She's won 7 of 18 starts. Strong support sees her start, the 7 to 4 favourite. In three equity rows, the second runner for Francie Murray, this one owned by Ben Donning in Oma, a daughter of Deanside Equity and Scented Rose. She's a 16 to 1 chance and the rank outsider. Four is Mama Tina, trained by Paul Hennessy for Christina Noble, a daughter of Staples Joe and Long Valley Tina. Eight wins from 34 starts, she's an 8 to 1 chance, but if she's close to the second bend, watch out. Five is Tyra Lisa, second runner for Paul Hennessy, owned by PJ Fagg. This is the daughter of Drupy's Cool and Pittman's Lotto. She's won 10 of 22 starts. She won her semi-final in fine style. On that form, she'd have a serious claim. And finally, in trap six is Drupy Stacy, trained by Ian Riley for Sean Dunphy, a daughter of Drupy's Cool and Drupy's Roberta. She's won six of 11 starts, if repeating her October 28th form of 28.53, well, she'd be the one to beat. She's 11 to four. Well, the runner's now set for the final of the 2005 Newbridge Jokes. The hair coming up behind traps. The favourite in trap two, girl with guitar. And away they go, and fast to the stride is number three. Equity rolls, leads the bend now, number four. Mama Tina showing good pace on the outside. Around the bend, number four, Mama Tina. But number one now, Golf Crazy, takes control from trap number four. Mama Tina back in third spot. Number six now, Drewby Stacey showing good pace, but it's down to the third corner. And one, Golf Crazy leads by three lengths. Number six, Drewby Stacey closing the gap with each stride. She checks it at point, so does four, Mama Tina. And it's one, Golf Crazy leads around the final bend from number six, Drewby Stacey. Up to the line, number one, Golf Crazy goes on to win it. Second, number six, Drewby Stacey. And back in third, number five, Tyra Lisa, and the winning time, 29.07. And the result of the 2005 JP Moore Newbridge Oaks, the winner, number one, Golf Crazy, winning in tremendous fashion. Second, trap number six, Droopy Stacy, and back in third, number five, Tyra Lisa, and the winning time, 29.07. Well, Michael, it's a long trip up from Kerry, but uh, it was well worth it. Golf crazy, a tremendous winner tonight. Yeah, she ran very well tonight. Um, small bit of a doubt after the semi final, she'd touch tonsillitis. But then he's got, got her over that and he worked the oracle. Um, man's a genius and I think his record in finals proves it, you know. The bitch is a, she's a fair bitch herself. Now that's two Oaks finals. She won the she won the, the or the Cork Airport Munster Oaks down in Waterford and tonight the JP Moore Oaks a, a real thrill. Oh it is fantastic. Um, we were offered money for her earlier in the year and then it says She'll take you places you've never been, and he was true to his word. We're having a great year with her, and hopefully next year, hopefully she'll be stronger, and look forward to next year. She's a young bitch. We saw her in Shelburne Park earlier in the year. Probably a bit too soon for her, but next year you have a, a nice bonus now to look forward to if she can go on and win the Sport Press Irish Oaks. I'm sure that's the target. Well, all things being equal, if she can stay sound and... Dog racing is a funny game, as everyone knows, but that'll be the plan. Uh, wrapped in cotton wool, I'd say. <laughs> uh, I'd say Dennis's wife, Marie, could be thrown out of the debate. There'll be something like Man About Dog. You know? <laughs> but we're having a fantastic time. We'll enjoy it while we can and look forward to next year. Well, we can only wish you luck, Michael. Thanks very much, Ian. Thank well, you. Well, Dennis, tonight I'm sure, I'm sure it's a blur. You probably haven't even seen the race again, but the rails pitch really helped her out. And once she went around in front, that was it. There was going to be no catching her. Oh, yeah, she's a good bitch, but like that, there was. It was probably not knocking a bitch in the wall, but it was probably a better class race tonight. You, like you Paul Hinsey with two bitches in it, Ian Riley, Francis Molly with two more. We're just new with the games coming up from Kerry. Like you wouldn't you'd have to be wary of your opposition tonight. He was with opposition, but she is a class bitch. It really was a tremendous victory and you can look forward to the Sporting Press Irish Oaks next year. Yeah, if she's right. If not, it doesn't matter. She's done what she has done. 
if, the, if it hits it that the sports and press Irish show comes into her calendar with a bitch, you don't know whether she's going to break down or not, we'll certainly go for it. Like, we want, we'll take her on our eyes. She's fully running, she's getting better and better. She runs the night we want her to run, and we'll keep plugging away with her. Dennis, it's hard to keep the smile off your face. Enjoy the victory. Thank you very much. <laughs> hosted the final of the Enfer Munster Puppy Cup also on Sunday night. This is one of the biggest events of the year in the South Tipperary venue and offers a winner's prize of over €10,000. Michael, a great night here at Clomel. I believe this is your first night for Enfer to sponsor such a competition. Uh, that's right, Stella. Um, we're, we have no previous, I suppose, uh, association with Greyhound Racing. Um, we have been involved with uh, Tipperary uh, GA for the last few years and for the next few years as well. Um, we saw this as an opportunity to get involved, um, I suppose, with an event, that, a local event uh, in the local community. We're very uh, keen to, you know, to get involved with events that are local to Clonmel, local to Tipperary. Um, I suppose it's exciting times for Clonmel Greyhound Stadium. There's a big development plan for next year. We see this as an ideal opportunity possibly to get involved with Clonmel Greyhound uh, Stadium and its development. Uh, hopefully it won't be the last uh, event uh, we'll uh, sponsor. And uh, we have a lot of guests here tonight um, and all thoroughly enjoying themselves. And uh, I think uh, we should be back here again. That's great. And tell us, did you get any tips now for the big race coming up? Uh, Barry gave me a tip. Uh, I'll be very honest, he gave me a tip for dog number three. Uh, I'm sure the odds will be very short. Uh, he uh, he tipped some dogs in uh, a few earlier races as well. Um, I lost on one. Uh, I won on the other. I broke even. I had a wager on the third race, another dog he tipped, and I lost. And uh, because you have me here, I can't back a dog at the moment. But yeah, I think I'll back dog number three in the uh, the big race. Well, let's hope Barry's after giving you a good one this time. Please, God, be because uh, if he hasn't, um, it might affect uh, any future sponsorship, you know. <laughs> and the runners on parade for the final of the Enfer Munster Puppy Cup. In trap one, we have Rachel's Flyer, run by Michael Cullen, trained by Tom Lahey, a daughter of Top Honcho and Blackstone Lace, a half-sister to last year's Derby winner, Like a Shot, 10 to 1 in the betting. Number two was Stage Hayabusa, owned by Jim Foley and Anne Hoban, a son of Honda Black and Elias Stage. At nine to two this one, three wins from five outings. Number three is Campaign Trail, owned by Pat Curtin and Willie Ahern, a son of Mustang Yank and Lahern Lady, the five to four on favourite, seven wins from eight outings. Number four, Blackstone Harry, owned by Pat Sinner, trained by Owen McKenna, another of the top poncho Blackstone Lace litter, seven to two in the betting, has won four from nine. Then in five, we have Droopy Sammy, jointly owned by Howard Jenkinson and Jimmy Buckley, trained by Pat Buckley, son of Droopy's Woods and Droopy's Mary, the 5-2 second favourite, a powerful finisher. And in six, we have Darkie's Dream, owned by Paul Hines and trained by Paul Hennessy, a daughter of Top Poncho and Mina Line Rose, 5-1 to one this one, has won three of her 16 races. The hair now coming up behind traps, ready for off. The favourites in trap three, campaign trail. Oh, he stumbles at the start and cannons into number two. And at six, that's Darkie's Dream. Goes clear to the bend from five, Droopy Sammy in second. Sammy checks a bit wide. And at six, Darkie's Dream leads four lengths into the far side from one, Rachel's Flyer. Five, Droopy Sammy, a powerful finisher. Now goes back into second and starts to close the gap, but it's still number six, Darkie's Dream. Three lengths in front from five, Droopy Sammy, who's closing rapidly in second, but still two lengths in it, turning for home. Number six, Darkie's Dream. Five, Droopy Sammy. Sammy's starting to run on strongly and four Blackstone Harry, but number five Droopy Sammy comes through to win it and does it in fine style. And the result of the Enfer Munster Puppy Cup, the winner, number five, Droopy Sammy, on by Howard Jenkinson and Jimmy Buckley, trained by Pat Buckley. Second, number six, Darkie's Dream, and third, number four, Blackstone Harry, the time 29.03. Well, favourite backers knew their fate very early here. Watch number three, Campaign Trail. He comes out on his nose, loses his balance totally, cannons into number two, Stage Hayabusa. Meanwhile, numbers one and four are going in opposite directions. A big lot of crowding there. The inside four runners totally out of contention, and it's between six, Darkie's Dream, and five, Droopy Sammy, from an early stage. It's great to be here in Clanmel. It's, uh, it's cold, but I don't feel the cold. I'm delighted tonight and uh, to be here at Howard, the, the co-owner here tonight, and... Um, Fantastic to win it, you know. I didn't, to be honest with you, I was only coming down here being hopeful. I uh, love the Greyhounds, lo absolutely love the, the whole, the whole idea and the whole dream of the the Greyhound thing. But uh, you know, it's brilliant to, to come down and, and win the Munster Cup. You know, it's great. And Howard, you had a long trip over here tonight. Fanta yeah, come from Yorkshire, came across yesterday, flew into Dublin, went to Shelbourne last night, had a great night at the dogs. Even better tonight. 
obviously the credit's got to go to Pat. Uh, done a fantastic job with the dog. Very precocious dog. Should be a good dog for next year. Uh, obviously, thanks to Michael, the breeder. Second to none, as far as I'm concerned. Been a great night. He ran a great race. He was, just came up there at the finish line. Yeah, it stays on really well, doesn't it? Fantastic. Mm. The track's great. It suits him down to the ground. I think he'll be a better dog next year, hopefully, with a bit of luck. I think me and uh, Jimmy will have a lot of fun with him. I hope so, Howard. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think you'll have a lot more fun tonight, too. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll try. I was just speaking to Ger Holian before, a uh, 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 great friend of mine, a great trainer in Athen Rye, before I came down, and he says, he says, I suppose, he says, if you're lucky, I won't see you till Tuesday. <laughs> so, Jerry, please, please God, Wednesday. <laughs> Well, it's that time of the year again, the launch of the Greyhound Review. Believe it or not, it's the 28th year of the publication. And, as always, they present two awards. One to the Stud Dog of the Year, one for the fourth year in succession, believe it or not, by Top Honcho, who, of course, stands at the Frightful Flash Kennels. And then we have the Personality of the Year, and I'm hit the man himself, Fraser Black. Fraser, it was one hell of a year. Fantastic year. Fantastic year for us. Although we, we missed uh, the big one, but still the dogs run brilliant through it, and there were a credit to us. You had a champion stakes uh, at Dundalk International, of course. You had a Scottish Arby with Drewby's Marco. You know, ah, yeah. A lot of people to thank for that, Ian, the likes of the Dumfries and the, the two great owners we had, and plus the family. I mean, it's down to me, but it still is a family concern, and I'd love it to be a black family instead of Fraser Black on the thing, but that's how it goes. That's Everybody knows it, what a family concern is. And it's an honour to have it again. So of course, there was a sad note this week. Drupies Marco ran in the Waterford Masters and, well, suffered a career ending inj or an injury, but now off to stud and, you know, hopefully an exciting stud future ahead of him. Well, hopefully. We're, we're trying to work something, maybe trying to go to Australia with the dog. Cause, I mean, he's the best dog we'd ever been going to Australia and with his breeding, his fantastic breeding on both, both sides, that uh, I think he'll be a big hit there. And plus the fact that I stayed the last to try and keep him that I'd go for the stud fees every year to get a holiday. So, it'd be, <laughs> <laughs> so no, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be great for him, you know, because he was our most con consistent and genuine dog. And I think you do the Irish breeding proud out there. Well, let's just hope that 2006 is every bit of successful for you. And let's hope that Drewby's Marco is a success and maybe out in Australia. Oh, yeah, yeah. we have a couple of nice young dogs coming through. But we know we'll never have a year like we had last year. But it's be somebody else's turn next year and the best of luck to well, there you have it, Fraser Black, Personality of the Year and Top Poncho Stud Dog of the Year. Meanwhile, festivities are continuing here, so I'm going to join in. We'll have lots more action for you next week when we visit Shelburne for the final of the Tote Open 525 and highlights of the Comerford Cakes National Puppy Steak. We'll also be in Harold's Cross for the semi-finals of the Bagot Racing Irish Grand National and Dundalk for the final of the Dundalk Marathon. For a complete fixtures list and more information, log on to the Irish Greyhound website at www.igb.ie.